Hello and thank you for tuning in to the first ever episode of The Wesley J Show. I'm your host, Wesley J, of course, and I'm so glad that you guys are hanging out with me and some of my closest friends. We have a lot on the agenda to discuss today, so let's get to it. The first topic of discussion has to be one of my favorites, that is fashion. Now here on Piedmont's campus, I have been the best dressed title holder for the past three years, so I'd like to think I know a little bit about fashion. I have two fashionistas here to join me today. My first guest is a young woman who is known for many things here at Piedmont. One of those things being her amazing sense of fashion and her love for extra high heels. Her signature sta uh, fashion statement, this is Liddy Kofi. The next young lady marches to the beat of her own drummer in the world of fashion. Her unique style allows her to stand out from the rest. She is Summer Lewis. Hello, guys. Hey. How are y'all? Great. I'm so glad y'all could be here. Join me on the show. You know, I got my own show, so, you know, um, feeling myself a little bit, you know. Here. But, and y'all look beat, so I have to tell you, you look great. Well, thank you, <laughs> so to kick this thing off, what we're going to do is called Fashion Strong or Fashion Wrong. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm going to, we've picked some pictures at random. So we're going to look at these pictures and we're going to decide if these are fashion strong, fashion wrong, and tell why we think they're fashion strong or fashion wrong. Pick it apart. So, you know, the people out there don't make the same mistake. Um, right. So let's get it started with the first picture. Wow. You better wear that blue. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> oh. I would think that I'm always concerned about color and your shade, your skin tone. Mm -hmm. And I would, I probably wouldn't do that normally, but that looks great. So now she let me know that chocolate people can actually go there with that. That's right. Because she looks beautiful to me. I think that's definitely a fashion strong. I think it's also a fashion strong. The only thing about it is the deep V. Mm -hmm. I feel like her chest was a little bony, <laughs> so she probably could have covered that up with mm -hmm. the color. Do the next one. I <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a chandelier. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that at all. Especially around the, the boobs. <laughs> it's just too much. Remember when I said that skin tone thing? That is her skin. Yeah, she, <laughs> it's just, why, she put a little glitter on her skin and she called it a dress. I, yeah, I don't like it. That's really to the Oscars. Jump. I mean, the face and all, she's gorgeous. Yeah, she, she's she, got the she did the makeup. She got everything you know? else going the on. The hair is great. Just that outfit. That is dress is all wrong. wrong. <laughs> just wrong. I wonder what. I wish we could see the shoes, so maybe she got that. Because, I, you know, when you see somebody, you don't want to be that mean. So you have to, man, you got, you got man, shoes. you yeah, wore those shoes. shoes, man. Ooh, man. Your hair, though. Let's man. do the next one. Okay. <laughs> look, look, what's going on at the Golden Globes? What's going on? Is that a dress or is it a romper? I feel like they were on to something. <laughs> like they were done. And then they said, let's Ooh. add more. High fashion. <laughs> I bet that's what they thought. That's what they thought. Like, it's not high fashion. Yeah, because every time you do that big something or another, yeah. everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's couture high fashion. No, mm -mm. that's wrong. That's not high That's wrong. High <laughs> that. mm -mm. Mm -mm. She's that. like a shepherd carrying her wool over her shoulder. Wow, I'm just like. She's working that pose, though. It's <laughs> a lot of tools. You, you better do something. <laughs> but the thing is, had that not been there, that would have been a bomb dress, though. And I don't know if you noticed the heels. They're a little too chunky on the bottom. And they're the same color as the dress. I don't like That's it. That's just mm -hmm. too much. She needs some statement like heels, like a Yeah, red it's got to pop if you're going to wear that yeah. plain whatever that is. It's like you can't call it plain, but you can't call it. Yeah, it's because it's not plain, <laughs> but it's kind of. Can we do the next one? Yeah. Why is everybody so bland? But you know what? I don't mind that. I kind of, I really <laughs> like that. She Here, got the deep V. She got yeah. the deep V, but it works. And works. It works. She doesn't look bony. That's the key. And she has uh, that yeah. cape going. I'm That's not different. mad at that It one. looks very regal. I I'm like that. I'm not mad at that. Mm -hmm. I like that. That was classic. Whoever did her got her done. That's how you do simple the right way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not too simple, though. Yeah. I got a little bling blouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That deep V got some attention going for it. And yeah. I'm like head to toe, I approve that. I don't yes. know what the shoes look like. And that's probably a good thing. It kind of has a train. You, yeah. I wonder if it'd be tough to walk in. 
Probably. I'm pretty sure she stepped on it. Somebody stepped on it somewhere. Yeah. So that's the only thing you have to take into consideration when you're doing red carpet stuff. Who gonna be behind you? Other women that's gonna be mad at how cute you look. You gotta bring it on. Sabotage. Yeah, you, you gotta know. have somebody there <laughs> guarding that train. Can we do the next one? Silence is so loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's looking rough. Need we say anything? Oh, like this, it's like this? a petal on a flower, mm. except not. No, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> no. That's being I nice. wouldn't go. I wouldn't do that one because that that sounds elegant. That sounds like oh. If you came yeah, to tell me that and I didn't say I'm like, oh, that means she looks cute. Yeah, don't say that's that. Not that's not a flower. That's not a flower. A flower that's been stolen. That, 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 <laughs> it, mm. it, it, first of all, it was yellow. And it was like mustard yellow. She has yellow. that tattoo, too. Like, I'm mustard all about tattoos, yellow. but not. You got to know how to. You got to have, a, like, an edgy like, dress for yeah. that. Yeah. If you're going to show the tattoos, you got to do it right. Mm -hmm. That that was wrong. That mm -hmm. was. Don't do that again. Wow. She need, no. she need new friends, but that's okay. It's now time to give out our most fashionable awards. The most fashionable is granted to the male and female we feel gets it right all the time, or at least majority of the time, because even the most fashionable people, such as ourselves, you know, take a break. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, like, Summer, I'm, I guess we're going to let you go. No, later. We're going to let you go first. And I'm going to go last, because I think my picks may be a little shocking since these people have a lot of controversy in the media. But you can't deny their fashion while they're causing uproars. So I'm going to go ahead and let Lady take it away. Who did you choose, male and female, for your best and worst dress? Okay, this was very difficult, mm -hmm. but um, my top choice was Halle Berry, mm. uh, mainly because I feel like her beauty is timeless. Like, she, it doesn't matter how old she is, she could rock any dress, mm -hmm. any outfit. She has this, like, simplicity, but at the same time, she's able to just, like, bring us Ooh. extra wow, Ooh. you know? Like she, she brings it in. every time. And I, well not every time. I, I just, I feel like she's just top See, that's why I said majority, you know? Yes. Cause even I'd be like, listen, I ain't feeling it today. But yeah. you try, so who was your male? My male was Justin Timberlake with his beautiful fine self. <laughs> uh, I mean, think about it, suit and tie. He knows he looks good. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to try that hard, it's just, it just works. And, you know, when you watch the award shows, you tend to see a lot of the guys dress the same and it gets boring. Mm -hmm. But Justin brings it every time. It's just interesting to watch him. He's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're supposed to be talking about the fashion, though. Um, like, you went in on his... I on mean, his I know. said, okay, <laughs> suit and... I just love a man that knows how to wear a good suit and tie mm -hmm. and know how to wear a fitted suit. The fit, the size is so important. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, when they wear suits, they look, it just, it looks boxy. Right. It look, don't be afraid to show to some shape. Like, you know, just get yeah. it tailored and look print proper. And I think he does And that. I think the issue with that is, being a male, the, a lot of times you go into a suit shop and then you think, I know my size. So you go straight for the size and you automatically think that, oh yeah, this is gonna work. Not thinking about how it actually fits. Fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may fit you here, but what is this doing? Like, mm -hmm. they don't take everything into consideration. So they're just like, oh, yeah, I'm a size 36. Let's go in there and get it. And let's just be out because I know it's going to fit. Mm -hmm. And then you screw yourself over. Who were your picks, Summer? Um, I picked Zoe D. Chanel. Zoe D. Chanel. Yes. I think she is so quirky and fun. And I that love that purse is something. I know. I love her <laughs> outfits on New Girl. I think I would love to have her whole wardrobe. It's so adorable and kind of like girly, mm -hmm. but a mature sense. I love floral, as you can tell mm -hmm. in my dress. So, and she wears a lot. Yeah, of that outfit was so you. So, so who was your guy? I think uh, I picked a guy from uh, Vampire Diaries. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what his name is, but on the show it's Stefan. Mm -hmm. And I just like his style. He has the V-necks and um, kind of the leather jacket. Yeah. I, love I like that one. I know. Mm -hmm. I like a mysterious kind of look. Uh, to it, mm -hmm. kind of dark, but not like emo, and um, kind of like a bad boy style. Ooh, I, like I, like that. I like those shoes. I know they're mm -hmm. nice. Shoes are everything. So, yeah. I saw a little piece of me up in there. <laughs> you know, now I'm a little concerned about my picks. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, let's start with my first one. I had to choose the baddest bad girl of all. Oh. 
Miss Rihanna. Mm. Um, what? Go you ahead. Said, don't Just deny. Say what you need to you say. can't deny her fashion. Say like, look at the. You, you wouldn't wear those boots. No, I wouldn't. Lies. You, you know They're what? They're too much. I love, but she got a simple outfit. Cheetah on cheetah. Yeah, What's wrong colors? with it? That's wow, colors okay, see, now we're about to have an issue because y'all are hating on my best dress. I picks. will say I like her I like hair. Her skirt. I always like her hair. Do you like that? She's wearing nude heels. She's beat. And it Look looks good, that. though. She did it right. That's how she you did do it right. It. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the outfit was busy, so she went with a nude that actually matches the color of the outfit. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it right. Mm -hmm. Prime example for <laughs> all you watchers out there that be tripping. Um, so, my male. I know you're going to have something to say about this, too. Kanye West. I know. But. His personality. I, it is. But that you can't deny that he has style, though. Uh, that the bow tie. Listen. You know, <laughs> I, that, I didn't even know that, though. Yeah. Somebody else did that. He's doing uh, that. Like, he's just so clean to me. Like, he gets it right in fashion. And he has his own fashion line. And it makes sense why he would. Because he looks great. Look at that. And that's the dressed down version. Mm -hmm. What you look like you want to say something. No, no, uh -huh. I don't want to say anything. That's a Well, you got the high pitched voice and everything. You, oh, okay, <laughs> I see. I see how it is. It's, it's so, they're different. That's that's all it what, is. You what know. do you mean they're different? No, I understand that they're fashion forward. Right. But that's what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I think it's just because I'm so old fashioned mm -hmm. and just like I I'm all about keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So, but. That is, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't appreciate <laughs> how y'all went in on my. So obviously, my picks are not going to win this whole most fashionable <laughs> thing, which doesn't matter because it's not me. I got it. So <laughs> <laughs> only certain people can pull those looks off. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming that it's going to be between Zoe and Miss Halle Berry. Who are we voting for, for woman? I, I guess we have different. So I mean, I love They're so Halle different. Berry's. I think she's fierce. Mm -hmm. I love her short haircut. I think she's one of like the few women that can rock the pixie mm -hmm. and this short haircut. It looks so good on her. So I mean, I would go with Halle Berry. You go with Halle Berry. I personally like Zoe Deschanel, but I would go with Halle Berry too. Oh, that's sweet. I'll go with Halle. <laughs> 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 okay, so we're saying that Halle Berry is the winner of female most fashionable. Yeah. Look at that. That outfit rocks. Look at that outfit. All right. Who Ms. else Halle? could wear that? <laughs> somebody. Mm-mm. Not like her, but somebody mm -hmm. could wear it. I mean, technically, I mean, somebody could okay. wear it. Well, I understand what you're trying to say. <laughs> and this just shot Mr. Kanye down, even though he, he I mean, did he look nice. Y'all some He did. Haters. He did. He did. Mm -hmm. Haters. Just cause he looks great. It's just great. his personality. See, but y'all can't let the cloud to judge me, though. He looks great when he dressed up. So are we counting out Kanye West? No, we could put him in the mix. Okay, so we're doing all three now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had Justin Timberlake, who was your pick. We mm -hmm. had Stephen, Vampire Diaries dude, from your pick. Mm -hmm. And we had Kanye West for my pick. Who, who are you going with, Summer? Um, I do like Justin Timberlake's ties, but, mm -hmm. or his suits, but I feel like that's all I've ever seen him in. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that too, mm -hmm. actually. So I think I would go with Stefan just because I've seen him in the suit and tie, and he mm -hmm. looks so nice in Vampire Diaries. And then I've seen him in the leather jacket, as you saw, and I think mm -hmm. that looks good too. I'd have to agree with her, actually. Actually, I was going to agree with you too. So. I'm <laughs> sorry, Justin. So by our landslide, <laughs> we're going to say that Stefan Vampire Dude won. So the very first pair to win Best Dress on the Wesley Jelly Show is Miss Halle Berry and Mr. Stefan from Vampire Diaries. Congratulations for winning the best dress title, <laughs> the first ever on the Wesley J Show. We have to take a break, but when we come back, we will be sharing more of our fashion expertise. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Wesley J Show. I have noticed that most college students, especially those that are athletes, do not know how to dress themselves outside of comfortable athletic gear, or many think that looking nice requires too much effort. We're going to show you how to give those sweatpants a break and just how simple, right, Summer, what do you have for us? 
Okay. Well, since I have more of a, I guess, unique kind of grunge style, I thought I would start off with a scarf mm -hmm. that kind of ha looks like the galaxy and has a little bit of browns and blues. Um, it favors the gray, but not right the same color. Um, also, the brown and the gold stars go with the brown shoes. Um, I, I like how they're like a darker color. I think you could go with greens and reds. Mm -hmm. And um, the lace kind of is the same color as the white, so it brings it out together. So and then I have these owl earrings that I think would go nicely with them. It's just different, and um, I like jewelry, so <laughs> it goes well together. But they have a little bit of gray to go with uh, the gray in the shirt, so and the gold with the the stars in them. Mm -hmm. And then to top it off, because if you're having a bad hair day, if it's a little bit cold outside, a beanie always does it nicely. Just throw it on there, and then you're out the door for a casual date or a casual school day. Mm -hmm. But a day not outfit. Yeah, but you not look too great. casual. Well, Less you. than two minutes mm -hmm. of greatness right there. <laughs> <laughs> Liddy, show us what you got. Okay, so of course I brought my heels. I love colorful heels. Um, I think even with just heels, this outfit could be enough um, if you're not feeling like doing a whole lot that day. Um, but if you want to add something up top, add some color to your outfit, I think a nice scarf would be good. And there are several ways that you can tie a scarf. You can look this up online. I'm not going to go through all the different <laughs> ways. But each time, you like every time is really different and every different style of tying your scarf can really change your mm -hmm. outfit up. So that's what I have. Alrighty. Yeah, you look great as well. <laughs> 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 I guess. <laughs> so for me, I have to represent for the common guys out there that don't like to spend a lot of time on fashion and don't like to think about wardrobe too much. But you can not really think about it and still look great. So first thing being a pair of brown boots. Brown boots are your lifesaver. They go with everything, just about. And so if you have a pair of brown boots, you set, you're halfway to a nice outfit right there. So brown boots make the blue jeans pop, you know, and then a nice little something up top just to take away. It, you Actually, you could just do this if you wanted to and still look like, you know, I woke up like this. Or you can add what I would do is a simple little vest, well, with a little military print on it, but it adds a little something, something to the outfit and brings home the boots, you know. Still, not too much, literally two pieces. I added boots and I added a vest to this thing to make it look nice. That's all I did. And I would like to say that I look pretty darn good. So, mm -hmm. you know, without even trying. So. That's all it is. You know, just a few accessories, blue jeans, plain shirt, your own little style to it, and you can look as great as we do. You know? Hopefully sharing our knowledge has helped you see just how easy it is to be effortlessly fashionable. I want to thank my first two guests for joining me today. Don't go anywhere. We have more coming up. I have more friends stopping by to talk about relationships and love. And I'm asking all the questions that I'm sure that all of us have had during the period of a relationship or before we hopped into one. This could get juicy. Don't go anywhere. Relationships play a big role in the lives of young men and women. Back in the day, women would go back to college, not necessarily to graduate, but to find their husband. So my next guests are here to chat with me about their views on relationships and love. This first guest is a junior mass communications major at Piedmont College. Welcome, Brandon Williams. The next guest is a junior criminal justice major here at P uh, Piedmont. She is Salima Gregg. Nice to be here. How are you guys? I am great. Doing How are good. you? Thank you for stopping by the Wesley J Show. Well, I'm so course. excited to have y'all here. You know, <laughs> on my own here. set and such. Glad oh. to be here. Are either of you in a relationship? I am personally not in a relationship right now. You're single? Yes, I am single. Why? Because this, you know, just my choices lately have not been the best. What, as what far does as that mean? Goes. 
it means that I need to work on what I really want in a person. Mm. Instead of probably just going for looks, which I probably tend to do the mm-hmm. most. So maybe if I work on myself first, then I could probably look for somebody. Well, I'm glad you, you know, figuring it out. Why are you, are you in a relationship? <laughs> yes. For how long? Uh, it'll be three years next Tuesday. Three years next Tuesday, March. 18. Not bad. Um, so did KJ pursue you or do you, like, did um, you pursue him? I was the one who told him that I had a crush on him. Mm-hmm. And then I heard from our friends that he had a crush on me. And so one night after skating, uh, I asked him to drive me home and I asked him in the car. I was like, so do you still have a crush on me? Because I have a crush on you. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to let you know. Yeah. Okay. So do you think college students focus too much on relationships? Like, do you think we emphasize that too much? Not everyone focuses too much on relationships. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it depends on the per- person that you are, mm-hmm. really. So, so you've been in a relationship for almost three years now. Yeah. Do you think that you're invested more in that sometimes than you should be versus what the focus should be as a college student? It's, well, like what your parents say, anyway. I don't personally think so because if I need to get a project done, if I need to do my homework, I'm going to do that before anything Mm -hmm. else. Like I tell him, like, okay, finish your homework first and then we can do something. Like if you're busy and we have plans, do that first because I'm not going to do that for you. I'm not going to sit there and, like, break down and be like, okay, let's go here now because you said so. If I need to get my grades in and keep my scholarship or stay at this college, that's what I'm going to do. I want to be with you when I grow up. (laughs) Because let me tell you, um, being in a relationship is fun, and we like I like the companionship, but being here, I always felt like, especially now that I'm single, mm-hmm. I've always, I realized how much time I invested in that more than mm-hmm. like myself. Sometimes my work suffered just so I can be there for another person. What you can do is study dates. Like, I ask them all the time. I'm like, hey, do you want to do a study date? You do your paper. And I'll you do can my successfully paper. do that? Yes. Absolutely sometimes. Not. Sometimes. <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> no. Sometimes I stay up late and I finish it because, you know, something happens. But, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you can do it successfully. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly think for them it would be easier because they've been in a long relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, they love each other. But, you know, that first love, that spark in the beginning is never as strong yeah. as that first it's time. Like, old people now. Yeah, that first time, you, you don't want to I mean, do it. Because yeah. yeah. usually after the year, it's like now we're just in the routine of things. Not to say that there's not something new that we like about each other every day, but it is at this point, it's like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. that's boo. So you're going to be boo after I finish my paper. Did cheating a deal breaker for both of you? Yes. Of you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're done if I'm you done. cheat? Hell yeah. I am done. Really? Like just done? I'm like, done. If so, I invest so much into one person yeah. and they cheat, I'm done. No matter how long you've been together, I'm that's done. the end. I don't yeah. care if we were married no, for 30 because years. This is the thing. Hey. You, like he said, you invest so much time into them. It's not, you, I mean, you don't mean to, but that's mm-hmm. how you feel with that person. And for that person to break your trust mm-hmm. of everything. Like, and then, okay, if you cheat, I can understand if that person comes to you and they kiss you. And you're like, eh, you know, I have a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. But then if they keep coming on to you, you're like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do this. It takes time to do stuff together. (laughs) So during that time, you didn't think not once that the person that I love would be hurt by this, be broken by this. Mm -hmm. That didn't even come into your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm out. Now, Granted, when I think about it, I could probably forgive something like a kiss Mm -hmm. versus... Because when I automatically, when I when you say cheat, I'm thinking sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And that's when oh. I, I go in the red so zone. So kissing is cool, just not No, not sex. cool, but I'm saying if like, they continue if to I decided it. to. <laughs> so once it's fine, no, like and if, then. Okay. <laughs> that's basically if, what you're saying. Uh, once it's fine. If I were to come on to you and I would kiss you, but you push me off, shut up. But you push me <laughs> off, then you understand I'm not supposed to be doing this. But mm. if you come on to me and you know you have a girlfriend, then you just broke that trust with your girl. Because you're the one who came on to someone else. So obviously you didn't like keep that attraction. You were thinking of something else. You weren't really in your relationship like you should have been. Like something else was pulling you out of it for you to be able to do that with someone else. So then so, even now, think about it. I probably even couldn't <laughs> forgive cheating. You are all cheating. over the place. But think about this. <laughs> think about like if you forgive cheating, uh-huh. in your mind, that trust is never going to be the same it's again. It's not. Because you're going to question 
oh, I'm going out with the guys tonight. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> who? <Like> that. <laughs> oh. What? What guy? It can lead to spying. Yeah. It's going to lead to you constantly calling what you're doing. Yeah. They don't answer. It's and, blowing up in your mind. Yeah. And even if they don't cheat, but they tell you a lie just because they don't want you to find out something else. Mm -hmm. When you find out that they lied about something, you're like, oh, so were you having sex with her? <laughs> even if they were just like, they just wanted to be out for a few hours yeah. just to get away from you. See, so, I but that question's in your mind. It's going to end eventually. I, I honestly don't know. Just, I don't know. I think I would want to say, see, I'm, I don't know if it's because we're young and we're like, but I would want to say, naturally, I would be like, yeah, we're done. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes I'm just like, when you talk to your grandparents and you're like, oh, tell me about your relationship. And then you hear the good stuff, but then you hear, some, like, if you have honest grandparents, like mm -hmm. what I've had, you know, they'll tell you the good rosy stuff, but then they're like, this is what's also going to happen. And not once have I talked yet to an a old couple, an older couple. And they've said, oh, yeah, nobody ever cheated. And we were just good right the entire relationship it's like oh yeah this is what happened but in the end they seem very happy so i'm just like i don't i don't know when do you feel like it's okay to pop the question this is for either of you or both of you pop the i love like, your question no the question the question, the oh, question, not, question not, not the okay, word, not the word. <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> hold up mm -mm, hold my phone <laughs> that qu oh man <laughs> i think when every bone in your body says that this is the person and you want to spend the rest of your... Now, when I say every <laughs> bone, there's like 200 and something bones in here. I mean every single bone in your body has mm -hmm. to say, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. Through thick and thin, no matter what we go through, we're going to work through it. Do you think our age is too young to be trying to pop the question? Yes. Brandon, how do you feel? <laughs> well, I'm tell you how I feel because I told you, <laughs> I think our age we just mainly go on attraction unless mm -hmm. you're in like maybe a serious relationship like that. They've already been in a relationship for three years, and so it wouldn't surprise me coming out of college that he pops the question. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be a surprise. But mm -hmm. say if you get in a relationship your junior year in college, and then as soon as you get out, you pop the question. I think that's too soon. Because you got to go through your career. Even after graduating? Even after graduating. I still think it's too soon. So when is good for Brandon? When I told you every bone in my body. <laughs> okay, but what if every bone in your body, say you met somebody right now. Right now. And then somehow you fell in love with this person, like, quickly. And it was mutual. And every bone in your body said, I love this person. I can see myself with this person for the rest of my life. Would, would this happen next semester? No. But every bone in your body. Every bone. But that's fine. Yes. But I'm saying that's every, for me every to last drop that. one of them. But said, listen, that was for me to drop that knee. I didn't say at that moment. Right. See, I would keep it going mm -hmm. because oh, I want to okay. go through my career. That makes that's sense. Understandable. And so when I get to a set place in my life and I'm comfortable financially, mm -hmm. I have you know my own house, car. I'm just supporting myself financially, and I'm doing what I want to do, and I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. Then can I focus on something as big as a marriage? Because that's a lot. Because mm -hmm. you're sharing everything, financial, everything. Okay. Okay, I have one last question before we wrap this thing up. Um, my question is, when do you know or when do you feel like it's time to walk away? Let's just call it quits. I feel like you know when it's time to walk away when you don't have any fight left in you. Mm -hmm. Because if you've tried to say everything that you've had to say, and that person just doesn't care, or you see that they have no effort to change anything at all, mm -hmm. and you're the only one doing something to make that relationship build itself back together, then you need to just let it go. Because it takes two people to make a relationship great. Mm -hmm. And if you're the only one working towards that, then you just need to leave. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you're gonna find someone else. I know it's gonna take a while, to get yourself back together, but it's worth it in the end of the, at the end of the day because instead of trying to invest yourself and just keep doing it and doing it, you're only hurting yourself because mm -hmm. that person is not caring because they've stopped. If you're using all that effort to make that person be a certain way that you want them to be and they're not going to be it, you need to go find someone in the world that's going to be all of that for you without having to work for it. 
You need to be like a counselor or something, because yeah. that was a good answer to this segment. I'm going to just say that. You just took us to church for a minute. <laughs> so, well, thank you both for stopping by the Wesley J Show and shedding some light on your views of relationships and love. Stay tuned. We have more coming up. We're talking about balance and how to get your life in order. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Wesley J Show. If you are just now tuning in, shame on you because you've missed a lot of interesting stuff. But don't worry, there is still more to be discussed. A prominent issue among college students is balance. How do you find a balance in day-to-day -day life as students? Studying homework, classes, clubs, regular work, life, relationships, etc. My next guests are very busy men and women that seem to be experts at balancing their <laughs> workload. <clears throat> the first is a sophomore double major, mass communication major, and English. She is Janie Harris. The next guest is a senior music ma musical theater major and music major. He is Nicholas Johnson. Thank you guys for joining me. How are you? Oh, okay. We are great. Well, I'm glad <laughs> you guys could stop by my Wesley J show. <laughs> Got my own show, sounds so official and such. Um, my first question, I guess, is, Give us a little rundown of your, what do you do as a student at Piedmont? Nick, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, well, aside from class, of course, um, I'm a part of um, the Piedmont Chamber Singers. Mm -hmm. We're a tour and choir. We go to different high schools to recruit students for our music department. Um, I'm also part of the Chorale. That's more of a sign-up group that we do here every Monday night. I'm also um, on Res Life, and with Res Life, we're required to do different events with students. Um, on as well as off campus to keep them busy or to inform them on what's going on. Um, I'm also a double major, as you mentioned earlier, so that's the theater side. So I do a lot of theater shows, mm -hmm. and it really consumes your time in your life almost every day. We might get one off day, maybe Saturday, but not really. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Ms. Janie? Oh, that is a complicated <laughs> question. Let's go. I have to list it all out first. I cheer. Mm -hmm. I am the Student Advertising Director of the Campus Activities Board. I am a double major. Oh, let's see, what else? Oh, I'm a resident, resident assistant as well. I feel like there's something else, but maybe not. Oh, I write, I write for the Navigator. Okay. I do that. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it's interesting that you both have something in common, both being double majors and both being RAs. So tell me a little bit about what that's like, the balancing double major and being an RA. You to go first? Yeah, you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, in the beginning, um, it could be a really difficult thing, mm -hmm. um, trying to balance both. I do often feel like I don't have enough time, and there aren't enough hours in one day. Mm -hmm. um, but by being a double major and by me being both performance majors, it requires a lot of outside of class rehearsal, a lot of outside of class studying, and pretty much, you know, we go to class and they help us through whatever we need help with, but the learning really comes outside of it. Um, the shows, the concerts, that comes outside of class work and doing extra stuff, as well as um, being an RA. That's a 24-hour job, as Janie can attest to. So it's, we're always practicing, we're always working, so st stuff bump head times overlap. I often feel like I don't have enough time, but my secret is my phone. I named her Darla. <laughs> she has this little thing called quick events and stuff. So I put everything in my phone. I put alarms, and it tells me what to do. Mm -hmm. If that phone is dead, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. I agree with the having to have everything in one place. I have a planner that if I ever lost, I would probably have a breakdown. <laughs> yeah. It is my life. I have everything written down in that thing. It looks like a jumbled mess because I use different colored pens mm -hmm. for everything, color coding and mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. But I think the biggest thing with being a double major and with res life and everything I do is that I have to be flexible with time. That you know, sometimes I might plan, okay, I'm gonna do my homework from three to four today. Well, just kidding, a resident came in, has an issue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna take care of that first, of course. And so 
I have to push that back to like 11 to 12 that night. And I still, I find a way to do it. I don't know how I do it, but I do. So can you tell me, describe a typical day for you. So you went to bed, kinda, I guess, but you woke up, <laughs> I guess. I'm assuming that at Maybe. some point, <laughs> everywhere we went to sleep. sleep. <laughs> so when you wake up from your hour of sleeping, we woke up in the morning, what are we doing? Ooh, well, first I have like a regular routine of getting up in the morning. I take my time <laughs> getting ready, even though sometimes it does not look like it. Because I will take a 45 minute shower because that's like my personal time that keeps me sane kind of thing. And so then- you get 45 minutes of your own life. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wake up extra early for that too. Okay. But um, then I'll go to classes and whatever I have planned that day. Mm -hmm. um, meetings, <coughs> I know that like the first of every month we have Res Life mm -hmm. meetings, so that's always an evening thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of things usually just pop up. It's usually like last minute things that people are like, oh hey, by the way, can you come do this for me real quick? Mm -hmm. so. Nicholas? Okay, my mornings are chaotic. <laughs> The first reason is because I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. um, I try my best. <laughs> I've gotten better it, with the mornings. But I'm usually really tired from the day before. Mm. So when I wake up, I tell myself I'm going to wake up at 8 o'clock and <laughs> class is at 10. And I don't end up waking up till like 9.15 mm -hmm. or 9.30 sometimes. So I jump in the shower for like five or six minutes. <laughs> I may or may not get dressed, it depends. I don't ever go naked, mm. but <laughs> I, I put on something, you know, just to get me by for a few hours. Um, I mean, once I make it to class, it's just like any other student, but um, any time between classes or at work, I'm literally either working in shop, doing homework, or some sort of take-home test, um, or studying or practicing. It's the same thing every day, and also, of course, surf shuffling with rehearsals and residents in as like Janie said, uh, it's really difficult to plan stuff because you will think that you can do this here. And on the days you really believe that this is my catch up day, mm -hmm. and it's not a bad thing and it's not a burden, mm -hmm. someone will need us to do something for them or somebody who might just be having a rough day. Mm -hmm. So they'll really take about three or four hours. And then before then you've kind of like, you know, bypassed like four things you needed to get done. So mm -hmm. then you just got to do it later or do it the next morning. So that's like a typical day. How do you, Okay, for the for the regular people that are not robotic like y'all, <laughs> um, how do you keep from going crazy? Because I'm going to be honest. My freshman year, I came from <coughs> high school where I did every single club you could possibly think of on top of dance, on top of cheering, mm -hmm. you know, everything. But it seemed like it was easy. Mm -hmm. Then so I came to college like, oh, it's, it's not going to be no problem to just get <laughs> out here and do all of these clubs too, plus my school work, plus, 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 plus. Mm -hmm. And then I quickly found that... <coughs> No, so I, the fast, as fast as I picked up clubs, I dropped them all. Mm -hmm. And I kept like maybe two or three mm -hmm. on top of, you know, the mass comm schedule, which I feel like is busy, but you're mm -hmm. a double major and you're still making it happen. So my question is, how do you keep from just losing it? Because I know I, as a freshman, and I'm pretty sure a lot of common folk have the same issue, it gets scatterbrained in my brain when it's just not systematic. So I'm just like, ah! It gets done somehow, but it's always chaotic, and I always feel like I, there is no way I'm going to make it through all mm -hmm. of this. But you seem like you managed to be able to handle whatever comes your way, even if it's completely unexpected. It's controlled chaos. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it's, it's controlled chaos. I know for me, it's a little different than most people. Mm -hmm. um, when I first got here, for an example, I think I was taking 16, 17, or 18 hours, and I've always taken 18 or 19 hours a semester. So I'm used to being really busy, and the more busy I am, the better off I am. I, I don't know how to explain it. That's just how I work. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really good under pressure, so the more I have to do, the better off I am. The less I have to do, you know, procrastination starts to set in. But I mean, truth be told, I do lose it sometimes. Mm -hmm. But one thing I learned is, no matter what, even if you're an RA, you have to take time for yourself. Mm -hmm. There comes a point in the week or the day or the weekend where you just have to leave or lock your door or not answer your phone or answer. You have to take time for yourself. That's the only way to keep yourself sane. You have to relax and give your body rest. If not, you will crash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my 45 minute shower. <laughs> so for people that aren't, you know, as 
controlled as you guys are. Do you have any advice that you would give to people to how to manage getting through the day-to-day -day of school and that kind of thing? Of course. I don't know if it would help, but um, just something simple, like I said, um, a lot of us have smartphones mm -hmm. in today's time. They truly do help. I don't think a lot of us realize what our phones can do for us because mm -hmm. we often tell our friends, remind me to do this. Right. Or remind me. You put it in your phone, your phone is in your pocket. Your phone is always near you. Right. Any college student who says it's not, they're <laughs> probably not telling the truth. Right. We always have our phones. But the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is don't waste your time doing nothing or don't sit around all day doing things that are not important and not helping you get to your future goal. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, some of us really like to hang out with friends, but why would you hang with your friends for four hours if you know you have an exam tomorrow, or if you know you have a show tomorrow, if you know you need to be off book, mm -hmm. you know? You should spend those hours, or at least half of that time, getting better at your art or getting better at your craft, no matter what it is. If you're a mass comm mm -hmm. major, a theater major, even if you're a nursing major, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what, you know, just use your time wisely and think about what you're doing before you just let your time go. Time mm -hmm. is precious. Mm -hmm. Once it's gone, it's gone. It doesn't come back. I'd say add some control, mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. he was saying. Buy a planner. They're like two bucks. All it takes is while you're sitting in class, and the teacher's like, "Oh yeah, make sure you do this." You just mm -hmm. write it down. If I didn't write all that stuff down, I would not be passing classes. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you both for stopping by, thank and you. thank you guys at wherever you are for watching um, the Wesley J Show. Tune in next time. Stay blessed.